Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China. Today, we are going to share some exciting tech innovations and announcements that happened in China last period. Unearthed in China's Liaoning province, a rare fossil captured a dramatic battle frozen in time. The fossil shows a small mammal called Rapanomimus locked in a combat with the Tachosaurus dinosaurs, weighing three times over itself. The Rapanomimus was perched on the back of the Stetacosaurus, gripping its lower jaw with ferocity and tearing it into its ribcage, while its teeth were embedded in the dinosaur's forearm. Its position on the dinosaur's back and the lack of bite mark indicates that it was a hunt. It's kind of like how weasels and wild dogs and hyenas often hunt larger prey. This extraordinary finding provides direct fossil evidence of the interaction between the two groups and shows that Mesozoic mammals were not just scurrying beneath the feet of the dinosaurs. Sadly, the Rapanomimus were also consumed by a volcano eruption and eventually descended into the obscurity of evolutional history. This particular fossil was found in the Yixian Formation. It is widely known as China's Pompeii for dinosaurs for its abundance of vertebrate fossils frozen in time on the layers of volcanic ash. The location, along with the border Chinese fossil Jeho biota, has played an important role in revealing the diversity of small-bodied dinosaurs and other faunia. China has announced that it plans to launch its first reusable spacecraft as early as 2027, and this new spacecraft will be able to transport seven astronauts. It is compared in capacity to SpaceX Dragon V2 and Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. The news comes from Yang Liwei, the first Chinese to enter space and the deputy chief engineering designer of China's manned space program. He said the new spacecraft will also play a crucial role in the future construction of China's space station and moon landing mission. The return capsule of the new spacecraft has recently undergone successful testing. A full-size prototype has already successfully completed a 67-hour test flight in 2020, carried by a Long March 5 rocket. One of the key features of this spacecraft is its use of innovative materials and structures that can withstand temperatures as high as 3000 degrees Fahrenheit during re-entry. The weight of the heat-resistant structure has also been reduced by more than 30%, which significantly lowered the launch cost. The spacecraft is designed to be reused with the return capsule ready for the next mission once it is examined and its coating replaced. Theoretically, key parts of the spacecraft can be reused up to 10 times. The new spacecraft will be used in China's crewed moon landing program, working alongside a separate landing spaceship, amongst other technologies such as specialized lunar spacesuit and manned rovers, to achieve the goal of landing on the moon by 2030. The China Manned Space Engineering Office has announced a competition to name the project, as well as a name for the new lunar landing spaceship. Also, the office has called on universities, research institutions, and tech companies to submit scientific payloads to be taken to the moon. A groundbreaking stem cell therapy could soon cure type 1 diabetes. Researchers in China have successfully used cells derived from stem cells to produce insulin for the first time in a human patient. After over a decade of living with type 1 diabetes, the patient in this trial has seen remarkable results. Just 10 days after the transplant of stem cell-derived pancreatic cells, the insulin requirements were cut in half. The cells were functioning well and the patient's blood sugar was stable. The research is led by Professor Deng Honghui and his team at Peking University. They researched on reprogramming mature cells into stem cells and directing their development into insulin-producing pancreatic cells. The final challenge is finding the best way to transplant the cells into the patient's body. Instead of injecting it into the liver, Dunn's team implanted the cells into the abdominal wall, which gave them a robust blood supply and an ideal environment to thrive. This less invasive approach allows close monitoring of the cells. 
The success of this first human trial demonstrates the vast potential of stem cells to cure diabetes. According to Dunn, his team was one of the earliest to successfully convert human pluripotent stem cells into pancreatic and liver cell lineages, which are now being used in cell therapy. These chemically induced and differentiated pluripotent stem cells have a function and structure similar to human primary pancreatic islet, making them a critical seed cell in regenerative medicine. They have unlimited proliferation and efficient differentiation functions. Their potential applications include cell therapy, medicine screening, and disease modeling. Deng Hongkui believes that the technology has the potential to become an ideal solution for completely curing type 1 diabetes, as well as being applied in the treatment of type 2 diabetes patients with pancreatic dysfunction. He also stated that diabetes treatment has entered the cell transplantation era. However, there are still many open questions. Researchers will continue to study the long-term result, safety, and efficiency in more patients. But if optimized, this therapy could free diabetics from insulin dependence and dramatically improve their quality of life. Recently, China launched a counterattack by imposing export controls on important semiconductor materials such as gallium and germanium. On 12th of July, Chinese manufacturer Huagong Tech Company announced the production of the country's first high-end wafer laser cutting equipment using only domestic manufactured core components. Wafers, the foundation of semiconductors, plays a vital role in producing these chips, and their precision is crucial for optimal performance. Huagong's innovative upgrading of wafer cutting technology has successfully eliminated the heat affected zone, shrinking chipping size to within 5 micrometers and limited the cutting line width to 10 micrometers. The heat affected zone is the area around the region affected by the heat generated during the wafer cutting process. This zone can cause thermal stress and deformation that can negatively impact the performance and reliability of the semiconductor chip. Chipping size refers to the size of the fragments that are produced during the wafer cutting process. This achievement showcased China's ability to conduct research independently, making a significant stride towards its self-reliance in the semiconductor industry. In addition to the progress in manufacturing, there is also good news coming out of the labs in China. Chinese scientists achieved breakthroughs in developing photon chips. Photon chips have computing speed a thousand times faster than electronic chips and can be produced using existing raw materials and equipment in China without requiring high-end photolithography machines. Meanwhile, photon chips offer a glimpse into secure communication technology. While traditional methods of optical communication rely on light's intensity, wavelengths, and pulse widths to transmit information, quantum secure communication instead relies on coding the quantum state of light. This makes it impossible for eavesdropping or copying without alerting or destroying the particles, thereby alerting the user. The team from Xiamen University took a new approach and improved the stability and spin control of circularly polarized photon source, resulting in the development of a faster and more secure quantum light source chip, which allowed for greater stability and control of the chip's performance. Currently, it appears that China is making every effort to break through the technology blockade imposed by the United States through various routes, and we shall wait and see how this technology war unfolds. We are surrounded by all kinds of electronic gadgets all the time, smartphones, laptops, smartwatches, just to name a few. But have you ever wondered what these devices could do to your brain? Wireless devices emit radio waves, which are a type of electromagnet radiation. EMR is a form of energy that travels through space and can affect living things. For example, sunlight is a type of EMR that can warm your skin and give you vitamin D, but too much of it can cause sunburn and skin cancer. Perhaps you have suspected the EMR emitted from those gadgets is harmful, but don't know exactly how and why. Now, there's evidence. Scientists have been studying how radio waves affect different types of cells in the brain, which is the most complex and sensitive organ in the body. 
The brain is made up of billions of cells that communicate with each other through electrical signals. Some of these cells are called oligodendroglia, which are responsible for making myelin, a fatty substance that wraps around the nerve fibers and help them transmit signals faster and more efficient. A team of researchers from China's Westlake University has discovered that radio waves can alter the way oligodendroglia work by manipulating the activity of a protein called CEBP beta. This protein, known as a transcription factor, has the power to switch certain genes on and off in the cell. These researchers found that radio waves can activate or deactivate certain genes in oligodendroglia and are related to myelation, inflammation, and cell cycle regulation. This means radio waves exposure may impact nervous system function, inflammation, and the health of nerve cells. More research is needed to fully characterize the health risk and safety level of radio wave exposure. But for now, parents have more reasons to tell their kids stop playing on your phone or it'll damage your brain. And that is all for today's Threshold. We hope you like this new section on science and technology in China. As usual, we welcome your feedback and thoughts.